Hello everyone, this is John with Ziptopia.org. Today we are continuing our RFC 3261 simplified series with part 4. As you may recall, in part 3, we went over the user agent client behavior, how, why, where the requests are sent, and the responses defined in RFC 3261 that the UAC should be familiar with. Now let's move on to the user agent server side and discuss how the user agent server processes the request. When a new and out of dialog request is received, the user agent server first follows certain steps independent of the method used in the request. After these steps are completed, the processing continues but now specific to the method used. We are going to cover these initial steps in this part of our RFC 3261 simplified series and continue with the method specific processing in the following parts. The initial steps are authentication, method inspection, header inspection, content processing and applying extensions. So let's start with authentication. Since these are method independent, let's use two different requests registrant invite to go over some examples. This is also a perfect opportunity to recycle the sample call we analyzed in RFC 3261 simplified series part 1 between Tarzan and Jane using an asterisk now PBX. All we need to focus on is the interaction between Tarzan and the asterisk now PBX as the asterisk now PBX is a back to back user agent. Just to refresh our memories, Tarzan has a SIP phone with an extension 55555 at IP address 192.168.1.20 and the asterisk now PBX is at IP address 192.168.1.3. First, Tarzan SIP phone sends a register request to asterisk now PBX without any credentials for authentication. As the asterisk now PBX, in the case of registration, the registrar component requires the SIP phone to authenticate, it responds with 401 unauthorized. Please note that the UAS and registrar respond with 401 unauthorized in these scenarios, whereas SIP proxies respond with 407 proxy authentication required. In both cases, the response includes www-authenticate header field. Using the www-authenticate header field parameters, UAC calculates and adds authorization header field to the new register request. If the credentials are not correct, the registrar will again respond with 401 unauthorized response. Since the credentials Tarzan provided in this scenario are correct, the authentication succeeds. Please note that the request goes through several other steps mentioned earlier before the UAS produces the 200 OK response. The 200 OK response is shown here just to indicate that the authentication was successful. Similarly, when Tarzan first tries to call Jane, his SIP phone sends an invite request to the asterisk now PBX without any credentials to authenticate. As a back to back user agent, asterisk now acts like the user agent server of Jane in this call scenario. As a result, Tarzan's SIP phone receives 401 unauthorized response and not 407 proxy authentication required response. The response includes www authenticate header field with certain parameters for user agent client to use in its new invite request. Let's keep in mind that the UAC follows up with an ACK request to confirm the receipt of the response before re-attempting the call. After the ACK request, user agent client sends a new invite request with the credentials calculated and listed in the authorization header field. Since the response is now a provisional 100 trying, Tarzan's SIP phone was successfully authenticated. Similar to the register request before, 
please note that the request goes through several other steps mentioned earlier before the UAS produces this 100 trying response. The 100 trying response is shown here just to indicate that the authentication was successful. After the authentication is complete, UAS moves on to method inspection. In our first example, the method is register. In our second example, the method is invite. We have discussed all the responses defined in RFC 3261 with examples in our RFC 3261 simplified series part 3, as I mentioned earlier. At this point, per RFC 3261, if the user agent server recognizes registrant invite requests but do not allow them, Tarzan would receive 405 method not allowed response. This response would also include allow header field to list the methods allowed by the UAS for the user agent client to take into consideration. If the UAS doesn't recognize register and invite and therefore doesn't support them, Tarzan would receive 501 not implemented response. Naturally, the UAC cannot use these requests again unless Tarzan wants to keep getting the same response again and again. In this scenario, since we receive 200 OK response for register request and 100 trying response for invite request, we know that the request passed the method inspection. In other words, the user agent server allows both register and invite requests. Please keep in mind that we are talking about user agent server and the C proxies will proxy the request no matter what method is used. Next stop is the header inspection. First of all, from earlier tutorials, we know the fact that every request must have all six of the following header fields. From, to, C sequence, call ID, max forwards and via. Now that UAS is doing a header inspection, in case one or more of these mandatory header fields is missing in the request or the request is malformed, UAS would respond with 400 bad requests. Since these steps are all method independent, this rule applies to all methods including the register and invite request we are using as our examples. If the mandatory header fields are all there, but the request also has header fields that are unrecognized or malformed, UAS should simply ignore or discard the respective header fields. For example, if Tarzan is using an Avaya SIP phone and has the Avaya specific header fields like P location or AV global session ID in his requests, and if Jane has a Cisco SIP phone, Jane's phone will simply ignore those specific header fields and process the request without them. As we covered in RFC 3261 Simplified Series Part 3, the to header field is the logical destination we are trying to reach, the resource we are trying to use. Therefore, in the test call between Tarzan and Jane, even though the back-to-back -back user agent acts like a user agent server to Tarzan, it's not the ultimate destination or the resource we are trying to reach. In cases where a user agent server receives a request that is intended for another user agent server on the call pad, this intermediate UAS can apply certain policies to this request. For example, limit the user, allow certain dialed numbers, and so on. If the intermediate user agent server chooses not to process the request based on the two header field value, Tarzan SIP phone could receive 403 forbidden response. One thing this intermediate UAS should not do though is to send 416 unsupported URI scheme response if it doesn't support the URI scheme. Since the intermediate UAS is not the intended destination, it is irrelevant whether or not this UAS understands the URI scheme. The ultimate target UAS is the one 
who has to understand the URI scheme. Same principle applies to the user portion of the URI in the two header field. It may not be known to this intermediate UIS, but the ultimate target UIS is the one who will be responsible for making a decision based on the two header field value. Unlike the two header field, the request URI in the request line is intended to target the next hop in the call path. Again, as you may recall from RFC 3261 Simplified Series Part 3, in the absence of route header fields, the request line is the section that helps us determine where a request is going to be sent to next. Therefore, if the URI scheme in the request URI is not known to the intermediate UIS, it could send back 416 unsupported URI scheme response. Similarly, if the intermediate UIS does not have anywhere to send the request to, based on the request URI value, Tarzan's siphon could receive 404 not found response. Another step taken as a part of header inspection is listed as merged request in RFC 3261, but we will give it a more explanatory name, loop detection. We know that the initial requests do not have a tag in the to header field. This tag signifies the other end of the communication. Since the originator of the initial request would not have received anything from the other end, the other end would not be yet known, and therefore the to header field would not have a tag in the initial request. Starting with 180 ringing, tag appears in the to header field. This is normal as the 1800 ringing means the called party received the initial request, therefore it knows of the caller party, the other end. If a user agent server receives a request with no tag in the to header field, it means the request is out of dialogue. It's a completely new session establishment. Well, if the from call ID and C sequence header field values match an already existing session in the UAS, the UAS will recognize this as a loop and send 482 loop detected response. In our example requests, neither invite nor register screenshots point to a loop as the C sequence header field values differ between invite requests as well as register requests. The required header field also gets special attention during header inspection. If the user agent server receives a request with require header field listing one or more extensions, and if the UAS supports them all, the request processing moves on. If, however, the user agent server does not support one or more of the extensions listed in the require header field, the UAS would respond with 420 bad extension response, which would include unsupported header field listing the extensions from the require header field that it doesn't support. RFC 3261 calls this next section content processing. If a message body exists, the user agent server checks the content related header fields like content type, content language and content encoding to determine if the formats used in the request are understood. If the used formats are understood by the UIS, all is good. The processing moves on to the next section. If one or more of the used formats are not understood, the UIS could respond with 415 unsupported media type response which must include accept, accept language, and or accept encoding header fields based on the specific format that was not understood. In order to let the UAC know what caused the rejection and what formats are supported instead. As we have seen multiple times already, a user agent client could include require header field to list the extensions it has to have applied to successfully communicate. 
It is also possible that the user agent server has to have certain extensions applied in order to properly process a request. It gets a little trickier on the user agent server side though. If user agent server wants to apply such an extension, that extension must be listed in the supported header field in the request. Obviously, if it's not listed in the supported header field, the user agent client doesn't support it. The recommended approach in RFC 3261 for user agent server is to process the request without applying the extension in question. If the UAS will not be able to process the request without that extension, then it is proper to send 421 extension required response with a required header field listing the extension UAS is wishing to apply. At this point, all the method independent processing have been completed. The rest of the checks going forward are method specific and will be discussed in the parts associated with the respective method. If you have any questions or comments about this tutorial, please let us know. Thank you. Bye-bye.